Welcome back to a brand new video here on Off Scratch. First thing I want to say to you is we've got a giveaway. You have a chance to choose your own plan and also get your hands on our brand new Get Back Into Golf Guide. At some point throughout this video, me and Nat will share with you exactly how you can enter that giveaway. But we know you clicked on this video because you want to learn how to start the downswing. And the first thing that I'm gonna say is I want you to feel that you start your downswing during your backswing. And people are now thinking, <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, so <laughs> essentially, if we look at the top players in the world, they are very, very good at this point of between backswing and downswing transition. Yeah. Whereas most commonly club golfers, we sort of get to the top and we think of it as two segments of the swing because that's how we're told. Do you think this is one of the biggest things that people get wrong? 100%. I think if you sort of look at people, they, they, they concentrate so hard on making a backswing and their sort of brain goes, oh, I've got there. We just forget the rest. Now swing down. Yeah. So what I want you to have a look at here is, if you look at when I hit this one away, the sort of, as I swing back, my lower body started to swing forwards. Now they bring some context into that. If I had a ball in my hand here and I was gonna throw it at you now and really throw it as far as I could, Watch my body. As I take my arm back, you would do this, by the way, naturally, I step forwards. So what I'm saying is we have opposites happening. And that's yeah. a natural thing to apply force and hit something as far as possible. I don't go and throw. No, correct. You've got, you've got to take your speed and force somewhere. It has, has to have somewhere exactly. to go. If all the movement's gone this way, well, it can't go any further that way. It's got to go somewhere to Exactly, use it. exactly. And this is why it's hard, because it's about syncing up some movements. So what I'm going to show you here is that if I just sort of take a little bit more of this space up here, I don't want to hit yep, you. Don't hit me in the face like you nearly did. <laughs> nearly did off camera before. <laughs> what I want you to think about here is just firstly making some practice swings where you feel as you swing back, notice how close my feet are to start. As your hands get to shoulder high, I want you to step forwards and swing through. So what you're doing there is initiating a little bit of a shift. And if I had to put a number on that around a 5% shift and 95% turn, as that club is swinging back. So you're already starting this process of recentering yourself, which is where we see that flow in the golf swing. And people have a great downswing, have a good flow in their swing. Do you think that's where, because I know this is something that I do quite a lot, I almost, like rush my downswing. It's like sure. I'm so happy that I got the backswing in. I'm like, Shh, I will just want to get the ball hit straight away. For sure. And, and that doesn't leave that time and space to make that movement. I'd also say you mentioned rushing. Like a lot of people feel like they have bad tempo and bad tempo is because they think of the swing as maybe even three elements, maybe even four, take away backswing, start a downswing, impact. Yeah, it's too much to think about. Whereas I honestly want you just to concentrate on as your hands pass shoulder height, you're going to start transferring down you'll feel a bit of a zip, but without having to do that. So I'm gonna show them that, just hit a few away here. Uh. That's got a great drill that you can do at home now if you haven't got access to the range, something that you can just get used to coordinating the movement. And I think that's why it's hard, it's the coordination. Yeah, definitely. Just piecing those two things together, isn't it? It's a lot for the brain to think about and for it does take practice. So here we go, I've got my wedge in my hand. Feet around sort of clubbed width apart. Okay. As I swing back, I'm gonna step forwards and clip that ball away. And again, this is all about bringing that flow. There's not a boom, boom. And this is how I want you to think about the downswing. It starts as you swing back. And you'll be surprised actually how it doesn't now become a hit at the ball and to the ball. It becomes a hit through the ball because there's tempo and there's that transition. Watch this again. I'm gonna put this one in slow-mo. As I swing back, pass, step through. It looks as if you don't actually have to hit it. It's kind of just getting in the way. Exactly that. And I want you to try that with your wedge, maybe seven iron, and then build it into driver where you get comfortable feeling this. And if I was to do a sort of swing slowly here, Nat, what I would see in, in, a, in, in all good players, and that has count sort of single figures with that as well, we sort of have good turn as we, our arms are still traveling back as we start this downswing. Yeah. I think physically we've spoken a lot about the role of the pelvis and that, that separation, but I kind of like this analogy because th that is quite complex to understand, I think, for a lot of people. For sure. it, it really gets badgered around and sort of, you're like, well, someone said it's this and then they said it's that, and whereas this is just step your foot across, hit it, simple. Yeah, and essentially just think about you going back to where, going back towards target as your arms and hands are swinging back. Easy. Right, okay, now, so what can people do? If I okay, take, move again, out of the way here for you. 
good old red band is out. <laughs> Let me just give you this a sec, Alex. You can actually do this with the golf club. Exactly the same. I do like to use a band purely because you can create some tension. So this is just a touch on the physical side of what you were talking about in the sense of get your brain to understand a bit of lateral transition. So using the band, you're just going to get your shoulders roughly about shoulder width. And it's just enough that you can sort of pull and keep this tight. You'll feel the back of the shoulders doing a bit of work. If we start with both feet together, all I'm going to do is step and turn across. So I'm rotating all my lower body the same that I would do in a swing. And I'm just keeping this width and tension pulled out here. So you can start to put a bit of speed into it. So as the foot hits the ground, you rotate at the same and time. And I noticed Nat's doing this really, probably do without even thinking. You're rotating back and you're starting to step as that's turning that way. Yeah, exactly. So it's, it's like the foot is off, it lands and you turn. And if you want to, you can change the angle of this very slightly if you prefer. You can come on a diagonal. So as you start to turn, you can come all the it's way a bit up. more like a follow through and so a golf swing. A little bit more like a follow through. And again, if you've got the golf club, you can do the same thing. Do it with a towel towel anything really you can hold out very basic simple move but it just helps the brain to sort of understand right okay this is what i'm meant to be doing it's not segmented it's all one yeah, thing exactly so guys it's now time now you've given these exercises a go hopefully you're going to take this into your next training session time for the giveaway so nice and simple all we want you to do is subscribe to this channel comment down below who you think is going to win the masters and don't forget to share this and like it for an extra entry we'll leave us up for two weeks and after the masters we'll announce the winner